Hi, I'm Jay Jennings. And I'm David DelVal. And welcome to Horror Talk. Join us as David and I will review three classic films made by horror filmmaker Ed <laughs> Woods in the 1950s. Yes, and before we do, you will get to meet the surviving member of the Ed Woods group, Paul Marco, or as he's known to his millions of fans, Kelton, Kelton the, the Cop. Cop. But before we meet him, let's take a look at that classic movie starring Bela Lugosi and Paul Marco in Bride, Bride of the, the Monster. Monster. As legend would have it, that was the first entrance of Kelton the Cop and our guest, Paul Marco. And as you can see, I love Kelton the Cop. This is one of the Kelton the Cop bumper stickers, but more of that later. Paul, has the video market kind of opened up a new audience for you now that... Uh, you know, we're getting third-generation kids watching Plan 9 and Bride of the Monster. Yes, David. Uh, Bride of the Monster was on <clears throat> television for years, and so was Plan 9. But when they came out on video, it brought a whole new audience, a lot younger audience. Mm -hmm. And they sort of um, like to see it and talk back to the screen on it or play it at home on video. That's right. Now, Paul, uh, Bride of the Monster was the first uh, in the uh, Kelton trilogy. Uh, Ed Wood, a <clears throat> very famous filmmaker for the 50s with that kind of schlock horror. How did you first meet uh, Ed Wood? Well, when I met Ed Wood, he was writing a new movie for uh, Bela Lugosi. And he asked me uh, whether or not I knew anybody that might like to be in it or uh, know anybody that uh, would like to invest in it. And uh, I thought for a minute, and I said, I have an agent who does packaging and uh, raises money. Uh, I think you'll like her. Her name is Mar Jusher. And uh, he said, well, gee, I'd like to meet her. And I said, well, that's fine. I'll bring her over sometime. Great. Well, uh, Paul, did Ed Wood write this character of Kelton the Cop just for you? How, well, how did that come about? Well, it was very strange because uh, there wasn't a part in the picture for me. And he said, there was a, a desk sergeant, but he was Irish. And he looked at me and he says, what nationality are you? And I said, Italian. So he laughed and uh, he said, maybe we can do something about it. Well, that's great. Um, as we all know, Bela Lugosi was in this film, uh, he, you know, horror film star from the 30s and 40s. How did you meet Bela? Well, I met him actually through uh, Ed Wood. Uh, he was over there while he was casting or writing and uh, I met him casually uh, several times, uh, oh, quite a bit before we started the movie. That's great. You know, we'll be talking more about your relationship between uh, Ed Wood and Lugosi, as well as Tor Johnson and Vampira. But now let's get to our second clip uh, from Bride of the Monster. We'll see Lugosi in action, so let's take a look at it. Threatened by a photo enlarger. <laughs> That's what they are using to, to be the mad lab. Paul, you get the feeling with Bela, uh, this was the end of his life. Uh, what was the relationship like between Ed Wood and Bela Lugosi? They were very close, uh, David, uh, because uh, no one would hire Bela at the time, and so he, Ed took him under his wing, and they became yeah. very close friends. He had just come out of the hospital, as right. a matter of fact. So uh, were they, was it more like a, a fatherly-son type relationship, or... Because he took an interest in his private life, too. Yes, uh, they were very, very close uh, um, socially, and uh, uh, Bela was around all the time during the shooting of the other scenes, and they got to know each other quite well. Now, is, is it true, Paul, since Bela was near the end of his career, uh, uh, maybe his sight wasn't so good that sometimes you'd have to maybe hold up some cue cards for him, like behind the camera? Well, um, Ed thought... Uh, that Bela memory might not be uh, very <laughs> good, and he had a huge uh, speech in Bride of the Monster. And uh, he had the prop man make some cue cards. And uh, uh, Bela was very, very upset about that. He said, no, I can't uh, do any cue cards. He says, I'll memorize it. And uh, Ed says, uh, Bela, we've got to be safe. He says, I am an actor. He says, I don't need any cue cards. So. Uh, Bela said, uh, Paul, help me. So uh, as it went, uh, I held the cue cards for Bela, and he studied them. And he was doing great. <laughs> then all of a sudden, he says, Paul, I won't need them. I said, OK, we won't tell Ed. So as it uh, came off, uh, he gave this fantastic, fantastic 
fantastic performance. And I held the cards next to my side all the time. And when he finished, the whole crew just got up and roared and applauded and oh, they thought it was great. But not one time did he look at the card because I was hiding them. So he really wanted to show people that he was still the actor that everybody right. remembered him to be. Right. Now, you told me once a famous story of a Christmas party with a black Christmas tree. Oh, and yes. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, right after uh, we finished making Bride of the Monster, I decided to have a Christmas party and make Bela the, uh, the host of the, in, in his honor. So. Uh, I tried to think about uh, doing something different than just having a cocktail party. So I, I contacted a party giver, a caterer, and I said, Bela Lugosi is going to be the guest of honor. What can we do to make it different that everybody would like? And uh, we all thought. And he said, uh, how about a black Christmas tree? Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, that sounds great. So as it turned out, it was about a seven or eight foot black Christmas tree and sitting on a big white snowball with all gold ornaments. And uh, when the host, or guest of honor, I should say, knocked on the door and he came in, right in view was the black tree. And he said, ah, now I feel at home. And it, everybody just roared because it was so funny. Uh, they they still up. remember. Right, yeah, right, they right. still remember. Well, I think we have a clip to go to now to stay a little more on the nostalgic note. So why don't we have a look and come right back. Bela Lugosi getting his just end in Bride of the Monster. That octopus was left over from Reap the Wild Wind, by the way, a, a John Wayne movie. Um, in, in ending our discussion about Bride of the Monster, Paul, uh, let's talk about the premiere. Was it actually a benefit for Lugosi at the time? Uh, yes, it was. Uh, when Bela got out of the hospital, he needed money, and uh, we tried to do everything to try to raise some money for him, so Ed and... Uh, my agent thought it'd be great if we threw a benefit for him. So we threw a benefit at the Hollywood Paramount. And uh, we sold blocks of tickets to various people, but uh, there was very little interest in the studios about buying blocks of tickets. So the benefit didn't raise as much as we hoped it would do. Mm. Paul, uh, fans really love Tor Johnson right. because he was such a, you know, bizarre looking man. What, uh, what was he like and what was his relationship to Ed? Well, Ed and uh, Tor was very, very close to each other. In fact, drinking buddies. <laughs> and they always tried to see who could drink the most. <laughs> and uh, who do you think? Well, Tor, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, but the funny part about it, when Tor drank, he became like a teddy bear. He'd pick you up and cuddle you up and uh, squeeze you, you take away your breath when he drank, and so he was real gentle. Like. So he was, a, he was a very, unlike his screen image, oh, he was yes, very uh, sweet. Very sweet and very tender. Oh boy. And when you went to visit him at his home, he couldn't do enough for you. Have another drink, have some beef. So he was quite a nice guy. Well, you couldn't tell by his uh, dialogue in some of his movies, but it sounds very nice. Uh, Paul, we're going to move on to the next film, which the second in the Kelton trilogy, uh, where uh, it's uh, where the dead are raised by some uh, UFO aliens, and it was really weird for that time with flying saucers flying everywhere. We're going to take a look at the world famous movie first, and then talk about Plan Nine from Outer Space. You have to find something. You don't know what you're. Now, this film, Plan Nine from Outer Space has been considered the worst movie ever made. Well, after Ishtar, I don't know, but Paul, what was it about Ed Woods that made him believe beyond anything that this movie was a great film? I'm yes, uh, he called it his baby. He was very impressed with it because he used bits and pieces of so many things, then he tied them all together, and he was so thrilled because it was made on a shoestring and bits and pieces of various different movies that uh, of all his movies, he loved this one the best. Okay, now Paul, here's something <clears throat> that's all the, the film buffs and historians all, all want to know out there uh, during this time. Uh, there's only a few minutes of footage of Lugosi from mm -hmm. this movie now. Now, set the record straight. Did, did Lugosi die during the making of this picture or what, was that used footage from another film? What is that exactly? Uh, no, he didn't die during the making of it. Uh, he died before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we shot another picture called uh, Tomb of the Vampire. And uh, that's the film, uh, the pieces with his cape 
and uh, he got sick and he died, and there we had a few hundred feet of him. So Ed wrote a story about it and uh, to incorporate the film. Did the, sh the shots of Bela like this, was that his chiropractor? Or <laughs> what's the story? What's I know, the, he's about there's a so many taller. myths about all this. Well, that was his chiropractor. And, uh, <laughs> he was a foot taller. He didn't look anything there. like him. No, uh, you know, he tried to camouflage it, but uh, I think what, that's what made it a hit because uh, everyone always talked about it and it didn't look like him, but uh, it wasn't meant to be. He meant it to, to be a serious picture, really. Mm -hmm. Well, serious or not, we're going to have a look at another clip, and then you be the judge. There you go, Plan 9 from Outer Space. Classic movie. I enjoy watching it repeatedly. Um, after, as you said, Lugosi died uh, before the making of it, Paul. Um, at his funeral, though, this is a very uh, famous, another controversial thing here. They say Bela Lugosi is actually buried with his cape, whether it's his Dracula cape, his nightclub, nightclub uh, act cape. What cape is it, Paul, that he's buried with, if he is indeed buried with one? Uh, no, uh, Jay, he's not buried in a cape. Actually, um, we took off the cape when everybody left the chapel. Mm. And uh, I helped uh, Mrs. Lugosi and several others. We folded up the cape, mm -hmm. and she took it with him. You with took her. it off of him? Off in of the, him. In the, mort in the, in the funeral in, home. In the funeral home. Oh, wow. And uh, the cape looked so nice on him. And uh, the minute you took the cape off, it just sort of changed right in front of your eyes because Bela Lugosi without the cape, Dracula. Were all of the Plan 9 cast there? Or? Uh, surprisingly, there was a very, very small turnout. Uh, uh, there was very, very few people there, which was so sad. I think we have another clip, don't we, coming up, David? Yeah, oh yeah, I want to change And uh, this is our last Plan 9 clip, and we're going to take a look here. So uh, let's look at it, and don't be afraid. Being seen from Plan 9 from outer space, Tor Johnson, carrying uh, their, uh, a person who's just fainted in his arms, wouldn't you? Uh, you also saw in that clip uh, Vampira, famous uh, vampire hostess, TV horror show hostess from the 50s. Paul, uh, were you, like, close friends with her at the time? Uh, yes, we were, and... Uh, we used to have coffee together, and we used to run around together and meet at different places and had quite a few friends that we knew to each other. And uh, when I invited her uh, to Bride of the Monster premiere, I said, why don't you dress up in your vampire outfit? And Ed thought that uh, would be real kicky, but uh, we didn't really tell him about it, but he didn't really know. We just pulled that surprise on him. In fact, Nikki Hilton drove us up there, and we just stopped traffic, and all the attention was on us. But uh, Ed really didn't know that she was going to come, until, and he didn't meet her until I brought no, her there. I bet that was the first time. Him out, yeah. mm -hmm. Now, how long after the Plan Nine opening and everything did Ed plan a second film, or was he always planning a second film? Oh, well, he uh, would knock out a script in a couple of days. He would type like uh, ninety minutes a word, uh, hundred. He just very very fast. He had many many scripts that he was going to do. In mm -hmm. fact. Uh, we announced a new script going to be shot every week. <laughs> well, after Plan 9, though, did it seem like he was getting offers, I mean, after the screenings? Uh, well, after Plan 9, um, he started doing other things. He started writing some books, and uh, he started doing, uh, he did a couple other pictures that uh, were not uh, uh, part of the trilogy. They were just little quickies. Mm -hmm. And he wrote some other scripts for some other producers. and. Um, that's when he called me and he said, Paul, he says, I miss Kelton the cop. He says, uh, it's my good luck charm. He says, I want to do a sequel. I need your character. Would you do it? Mm -hmm. And that's when I consented to it. And that's how the third picture. That's right, which is, uh, of course, Night of the Ghouls. And this is, Paul, my personal favorite because it has Dr. Acula, Dr. Dracula mm -hmm. in it. <laughs> so let's take a look at the third in the Kelton movies here. My personal favorite here. Let's look at Night of the Ghouls. Kelton. Yes, sir? Come in here. Uh, yes, sir? I want you to accompany Lieutenant Bradford. Uh, yes, sir. But isn't it kind of late to rent a full dress suit? Don't crack wise with me, Kelton. Yes, sir. Uh, where are we going? Just bring a patrol car around front. You're going out to the old house on Willows Lake. Yes, sir. Willows Lake! 
the old house on Willow's Lake. You mean where all those monsters come from? You heard me. Well, bu 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 no buts about it. Get going. Yes, sir. Cow. Uh, yes, sir. Get an extra box of 38s and take them with you. You think we're going to need them? Just in case, Kelton. Just in case. I don't think I'm going to like this. Kelton, will you please just carry out the orders? Monsters. Space people. Mad doctors. They didn't teach me about such things in the police academy. And yet, that's all I've been assigned to since I became on active duty. Why do I always get picked for these screwy details all the time? I resign. Kelton, so help me. If you don't get the hell out of here, you're all against me. The whole police force is against me. The whole city is against me. I resign. How he ever passed a police examination, I'll never know. <laughs> I resign. I, rem I say that in, in my sleep, uh, Paul. Uh, Night of the Ghoul is my personal favorite. You actually uh, had a lot more lines. You had just about a co-starring role in this picture, Paul. Uh, yes, I did, Jay, because it became a trilogy like he introduced me in Bride of the Monster and Plan 9, I was featured. And when he decided that he wanted to do the third picture, he thought, have a sequel to Bride of the Monster. And that's Kelton the Cop is one of the few people left. Lugosi was dead. Tor Johnson was still alive. So we used Tor Johnson's character and my own. And that's how it started. And uh, basically, it was written especially for me. And, and it was shot, uh, incidentally, at this uh, house we were siding in now. It's still standing, right? Right. Uh, Marge Usher uh, lives at this house. Uh, and that's how they gave me the name, Kelton Avenue. She, she lived on Kelton Avenue, and that's how they got, called me Kelton. Now, Paul, there's also one other interesting uh, note, a very bizarre note. Why, why did this film, I hear, why did it stay undeveloped for such a long time before anybody really discovered it and put it out on film or video? Well, um, I think uh, Ed ran out of money to make prints, and uh, I think basically the people that did put up the money decided to put it off as a tax write-off. So it ended up in the lab for about 20, 23 years. God. And how was it? How was it discovered finally? I think um, some uh, people that were doing research in, uh, for Edwood uh, Festival at uh, UCLA found it. So it was like a discovery, actually. Right. I think. Okay. Now, was that a suppose? That was like a sequel, wasn't it, to right. to the other one? But without, of course, it was supposed to take place in Bela's house, right? The Night of the Ghouls. Uh, well. Bela uh, died in the fire of yeah, the monster. Yeah. And that's when Torg Johnson comes back to life because he didn't get killed in it, as you will see in the next clip. Right. And uh, why don't you show the clip and, uh, clip and I'll uh, tell you more about it after the clip. Okay, let's look at that clip right now. <laughs> the house was not all that remained of the old scientist horrors. Patrolman Kelton arrived at the old house, only to find Lieutenant Bradford's car empty and Lieutenant Bradford nowhere to be seen. Patrolman Paul Kelton, 29 years of age, four years with the department, eager for the glory of the uniform, but wide-eyed with fear at the thought of actually being on special duty. Unfortunately, though eager, not what the department usually looks for in their officers. screen time uh, for you, Paul. Uh, as you said, this was the last in the Kelton trilogy, Night of the Ghouls. Uh, we were there at that house uh, just today, actually. Um, getting back to, to Ed Wood at this 
time out. Is it true that he needed somewhere to stay and you kind of like helped him out? Or like he stayed with you for a little while? Uh, that's uh, after he married uh, Norma McCarthy, who played uh, uh, hostess in Plan 9. Mm -hmm. They broke up. By the way, he got married on a soundstage. And <laughs> Bela Lugosi was the best man, and I was the overseer. So it was quite a party, and uh, they didn't get along very well. So uh, Ed came knocking on the door, and he says, I broke up with my wife. Can I stay here? And I said, well, sure. So we stayed quite a while, and the place never seemed the same. Mm -hmm. It was quite a lot of fun. Speaking of Ed Wood, Paul, um, through Night of the Ghouls, and I'm sure the, during Plan 9 of Outer Space, you met a very uh, strange character named Criswell. Why don't you uh, tell us about him? Uh, well, actually, I met Criswell before I met Ed Wood. At that time, he had a down the line five nights a week. He had I Predict show on television. So one night, there, Criswell start predicting, I predicted, and this is the next big star, and splashed the picture on the screen and everything. Well, I was amazed. It was such an impressive introduction that the next day I sent him a thank you note. And then when Plan 9 came up, I uh, thought uh, he would be very good in the picture, and so I mentioned him to, uh, about him to Ed Wood, and that's how he got hired. Now, uh, Criswell, uh, for most of you people, I guess not most, some of you people who've never heard of him, he's the man, blonde hair from the 50s, yeah. who said, do you know what's happening? And uh, he kind of got a cult to status. You're going to see in the, our next and last clip from Night of the Ghouls, Criswell here, so let's watch. <laughs> Maybe the bodies have gone back where they came from. Yeah. Sure. The grave. Nuts. Say, what about the blonde girlfriend? You know, the phony ghost you were mentioning. Yeah, what about the girlfriend? Well, she's still around here someplace. Unless she's become a real ghost. File closed. The police had only opinions to the true ending. It was only Patrolman Kelton's guess that could be considered the closest. And now we return to our graves. The old and the new. And you may join us soon. And you too, the famous Criswell, at the to end the the Celt and Ed Wood trilogy with Night of the Girl, a <laughs> Night of the Ghouls. <laughs> you wish the girls, didn't you, Paul? Night of the Girls. No, but uh, before we get into your fan club, Paul, I think David has a special presentation uh, for being yes. our guest here on Horror Talk. Yes, from Horror Talk, Paul, we have here for you a very special gift, a one-of-a-kind item that only you will appreciate. The title, yeah. the title is Bela Lugosi's White Christmas. <laughs> That's right. And even though it's not Christmas, it's a black Christmas for you. That's Paul. right. You can put that under your black Christmas tree. And we have tree. described it to you, so you should read our little, our little inscription there. Thank you very Thank much, you Jerry, well. and thank you, David. Uh, <laughs> Bela. <laughs> David. And David. And Jay Jennings. And Jay Jennings. Horror Talk. Horror alumni. Talk. Paul Marco, June 1989. There you go, Paul. Oh, that's wonderful. And I shall treasure it. And it's just beautiful. I Oh, I have something for you. Oh, okay. An honorary I Love Kelton the Cop fan club card. Whoa. Oh, boy. I'm getting free rid of my free membership, right now. Paul? Okay. Free membership for the rest of your life. An Whoa. honorary card. That's fantastic. Well, here we are. And we have monthly meetings, and they're a lot of fun. It's more like a, a friendship club. Everyone sort of talks to each other. And uh, we have popcorn, and we have door prizes, and we always show an old movie, and sometimes a new movie at these meetings. So they're more like getting together and meeting people and just having a lot of fun. Sounds great. I know Paul uh, brought a few of his things to show, uh, just a few items you get when you join the famous Paul Marco Fan Club. And besides this mem life membership, you get what do you get, Paul? 
Uh, well, uh, when you join the fan club, you get an 8x10 autograph picture, uh, especially for you, and you get some balloons that I said, I love Kelton the Cop, bumper stickers that say, I love Kelton the Cop. Uh, you get all different kinds of stories about me. And the best of all is you get a keychain. I want my own keychain. <laughs> I've got one. Let's see, see what it looks like here. Well, we just watch it. Held in the cup. Oh, show him show the keychain. Show us a few other no. things you get here. Like this uh, medallion here and keychains. And see the t-shirt. Also, yeah. the Held in the Cop t-shirts. That, um, Show it right to the camera. Reads, Boy, they come in colors. Don't yes, they? white and blue. They're blue right white. next to you. Look and at that. Well, and then the on the back of it, it says here, stars of Kelton the Cop and Night of the Ghouls, Plan 9 from Outer Space, and Bride of the Monster. You get the trilogy on your back. Right. Yeah. These are things that you can order at discount prices when you're a member. Paul, uh, tell us, now we're getting on to about your fan club, what's happening in the 80s and today. Uh, obviously, these were horror films from the 50s. What about today's horror market with all the slash and gore? Uh, I mean, would you take part in a, such a venture? Well, I get an awful lot of fan mail, Jay, and they called me a non-trendy, sweet, cop, clean cut, and... Uh, I haven't take, uh, accepted any slashy pictures. Uh, I've been offered a few, and a few nudies, and I wouldn't take. So I sort of try to keep my clean image of Kelton the Cop, and that's what the fans wanted. Uh, Paul, you were just uh, recently honored <laughs> by our own Los Angeles Academy <clears throat> of Science Fiction, yeah. Fantasy, and Horror. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what did you, did they give you down there? Uh, that was the 30th anniversary of Plan 9, and Dr. Reed and uh, the executive secretary Robert gave me a plaque for outstanding achievement in the movie industry, which I was very flattered and very uh, thankful for. And uh, we had a, a big celebration, and they had hors d'oeuvres and cake and uh, a lot of pictures, and and it was quite a lot of fun. And uh, I was very very happy about the occasion. Mm, that's great. That's great. Now, Paul, rumor has it this is this is just a rumor Ooh. that uh, you you might be trying to develop a Kelton the Cop TV show, maybe. Well, it's not a rumor. Oh, uh oh. It's uh, in the making. Uh -oh. I'm under development now, and uh, just putting the finishing touches on the finished script right now. But I hope that uh, I have a couple of people that are very, very interested in it, and I hope very soon that uh, we can put it on. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, Paul, it's been a delight to have you on. So as Kelton the cop, yeah, why, why don't you, don't you uh, put on uh, your uh, outfit there? I just want to say personally, it's been a pleasure and honor uh, having you here. Kel I, you know, Plan 9, Bride of the Monster, Night of the Ghouls, you know, ghosts, monsters, you know, they didn't teach me about this at Police Academy. That's right, Jay. So no, why don't you put that on and do your famous arrest as uh, we say goodbye here for Horror Talk, Paul. Horror Talk. Well, David, Jay, thank you so much. and It was such an honor being on your show. Okay. And thank you for listening. And Calton the Cop says, take care and good luck forever. And goodbye.